one's here. No. It's nearly Christmas, and whoops, got the camera angle wrong. Oh well. <laughs> and I thought I'd do a bit of a early video. Well, it's a Christmassy video. Not exactly a Christmas special, but mm, sort of a tw December update, Christmas wishes combo. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, just to show what I've been working on, it's just that scratch book, scratch book deck. <clears throat> so Christmas is nearly here, and pff, wow, the year's gone by pretty quick. I mean, just, not only well with normal life, but in the modeling world too. So many new releases out. It's it's incredible. Um. It's incredible. Okay, before I get started, first of all, I just want to give out, well actually not give out the Christmas wishes yet, I'll save that for later, but uh, in this booklet I actually have uh, questions that were asked to me by uh, other modelers quite a while ago, and it's actually for a Q&A thing that I forgot to completely do, I forgot to do it. So, bear with me while I read them out. Getting this done quick before I do the actual update work, so. No offense to the people who wrote the questions, it's uh, kind of a priority thing. Okay, David Hardware. Okay, that's quite a name. Uh, how do I do remo my removable coal loads? Most of them, they're in there for good, but the removal ones, uh, I can actually make a video for that, no sweat. It's dead easy, really. Very dead easy. Okay, uh, Carl Conway. <laughs> How did I get into the hobby? I think at first there was that annoying blue tank engine. Then there was a gap, and... Um, after a bit of a bad experience in the past, I found this was a way for me to open up again. And uh, seven years later, I haven't looked back since. Oliver Rowley? Sorry if I pronounced him wrong. Okay, this is a free parter. Cripes. <laughs> How do I get inspired to model? What is one of my dream projects? And any small channels I enjoy. Okay, first, how do I get inspired? Well, I watch railway videos. That's awesome. But nothing, you know, modern era type. No, no. Old school videos. That way you actually see how it was. Uh, how the locos used to be. What the scenery was back in the day. And the operation and all that. Because you can always see that in archive film these days. I mean, preservation railways today, they they try to reenact things as old school as they can, but it, it doesn't come close. They still have to deal with modern health and safety stuff, which is always a pain in the backside. Uh, for your second question, and one of my dream projects, um, getting this in the big layout done, or as close to done as possible, but yeah, I think uh, my biggest ambition will be probably having a 10 by 20 meter layout. And if you don't know how big meters are, a fair bit over three, f one meter is a fair little bit over three foot. So we're talking about a t 30 by 60 layout. A 30 foot by 60 foot layout, I mean, which is pretty gnarly. It's pretty gnarly. Because this thing's about eight foot long. So something about, ooh, wow, three times bigger is nuts. I'd need a lot of space for that. Okay, um, any small channels I enjoy? I don't know if they're small or not, but um, Alex Hill, he's got a quite an interesting YouTube channel. He's got quite an interesting one. And I do quite like his videos. I do quite like them. I really do. 
They're very nice. And uh, right, who's next? Oh, speak of the devil. From Mr. Alex Hill. When did I get started? Railway modeling. Um, all right. About six or seven years ago. I didn't have much money, I admit. Um, I went down to the local model show where they had heaps of lovely exhibits and that. And I saw a locomotive that really caught my eye. It was a Bachman Peppercorn A1 class locomotive in Doncaster Apple Green. And um, it was W.P. Allen, the first of the class. <clears throat> Annoyingly, I could not afford to have both the Loco and the two Mark I carriages behind it. So, I bought the Loco and was able to haggle a bit of track to come with it for nothing as a sort of display piece. And I ended up buying a second-hand point and a couple of lengths of flexi track. And from then on, it just went from me running something on the tabletop cup for about half an hour, maybe an hour or so, uh, sometime after school and that, to what you see here today. Two layouts, a large collection of locomotives and rolling stock, heaps of track lying around. And I do say heaps because I see a pile there and a pile there and another one right over there. <laughs> and there's a huge one right over there. So, uh, yeah, uh, I hope that answers your question, mate. Uh, okay, here we go. This is actually a quite an informative one. Okay, from Michael Dodd, best track and wheel cleaners. Uh, only wheel cleaners I've used are the Pico ones where you actually have to have the, local, uh, the locomotive cradle in to hold it. Because, yeah, pretty much uh, the negative contact point is a wire brush and the positive contact point I believe is a wheel scraper or vice versa I can't remember and as for the best track Pico every single time Pico for both curves straight well flexi track in general and the points Pico points are the best I ever get because the dead spot on them is so minimal I enjoy it the most Hornby track, I mean, ye gods, the dead spots on them are a yawning chasm. It's horrible. Horrible. I'm not dissing the brand. I'm not saying Hornby's rubbish or anything. No, they're one of the oldest model brands out there, uh, like Marklin. But, I mean, they really ought to know better when it comes to something like a dead spot on a point. I mean, sheesh. Get your kids together, Hornby. Okay, that's the questions. Done. Now, back to main business, which is an actual update on the stuff. Uh, some work's been done on the micro layout, as has been on the, uh, the main layout. Most of which is actually fitting point motors to the micro. Uh, none yet to the main layout, because I'm focusing on this one. Trying to get it ready for next year's model show in October. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, oh yeah. Also been buying a lot more tools, as you can see here. Uh, so that way I can actually do a lot more hobby work. And as you've seen from this, scratch building. Which is a lot harder than I originally thought. Eh, still needs a bit to cut off there. Oh. <clears throat> also, I've invested in a new camera tripod, so filming's a lot easier. Um, what else? Oh yeah, new locomotives purchased. Uh, my latest one that I actually got today, that's going to be my first review of 2020. And... Um, not to be any spoilers or anything, but um, 
I think it's going to be a low, low start for 2020. Is is I don't even know why I bought it. I mean, yikes! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad, but what was I thinking? It was probably the low price. I can't remember. Um. What else? What else? What else? Oh yeah. Christmas wishes. Of course, I gotta say my Christmas wishes. Big, warm Christmas wishes to naturally my subscribers, who have been supporting the channel. Also to fellow railway modelers, such as Richard of New Junction, Alex Hill, naturally, because <laughs> I already mentioned them like twice already. <laughs> Uh, all the members of Model Rail Network. Yeah. I always forget the acronym. I always, it's locked in my head the full name of it. Model Railway YouTubers Community Group, and a whole lot of the other Model Railway groups that I am happily a member of. If I named them all out singly, uh, the video would be about half an hour long, maybe forty minutes. Naturally, a Merry Christmas to the model engineers down here in my hometown for putting up with my uh, encyclopedic uh, behavior around steam locomotives. And because I'm a young member in a club full of uh, older gentlemen, putting up with my uh, very, very... <laughs> idiotic behavior at times <laughs> I'm not even joking when I say that one um, <laughs> uh, thanks for putting up with my dumb ass um, oh yeah also to basically the retailers I go to for my gear massive Christmas wishes to them. I'm not saying who they are because then it will get into some legal reasons. I've done this before and I ended up with a nasty email. Not fun. Not fun. Okay. Um, oh, getting cramp here. <laughs> okay. Uh, heads up for 2020. Uh, straight after New Year's, first like a review of the year, done. Uh, hopefully a review of one of Hornby's best. And quite frankly, one of the worst. And also, a review of quite frankly what could be possibly one of the worst locomotives I've ever bought brand new. And I am not exaggerating. I mean, for the money I pay for, it is a dog. Okay, what else, what else, what else? Because running out of time. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Also, um, to a modeling mate of mine who lives in Australia. Uh... Deepest respects and wishes, because uh, currently Australia have been going through a very nasty brush fire over there. And from what I hear, uh, two fa young fathers have lost their lives to the blaze. That's quite sad news, really. It really is. Especially this close to Christmas, it's, it's not good. Uh, yeah. And for a change, I'm not going to end this video with a video clip, with end cards, nothing like that. I just wholeheartedly wish anyone who watches this video 
a very Merry Christmas and a peaceful and trouble free New Year. And this is the first time in quite a long while I've ever done a whole piece without having to do stops, editing, none of that rubbish. For this Christmas uh, mid-December update thing, I'm doing this old school one take. One take. Thank you all very much for watching this. This is up on Ord saying Merry Christmas to all. Hope you all have a brilliant New Year.